from kidney disease. He shared his struggle with God's plan. His struggle was with the words. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. The man said that he struggled with those words of God until he realized that he did not have to define what is good. Faith that rests upon a sovereign and good God rests in God's right to define things. When you give in to bitterness, you are going against God's right to define what is good. Naomi's divine ending is the theme of our spiritual nourishment drawn from Ruth. Chapter 1, from verse 1 to 19. But for emphasis sake, I will read with you verses 16, and I will end at 19. And I read. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if anything but death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. So the two women went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the woman exclaimed, Can this be Naomi? The women exclaimed, Can this be Naomi? From Naomi is one of the flesh and blood example of the most destructive human coping mechanisms there is, bitterness. We all are dominated by bitterness. Our message should bring hope and perhaps chart a new path out of it. In the story of Ruth is a family of four living in Bethlehem who suffered through a famine and decided to move to where there was food. Unfortunately, where there was food was in the nation of Moab. The Moabs were enemies of the Jews. It was quite an unfriendly place for them to laugh. Some time after arriving there, 
Elimelech, the father, died leaving Naomi, his wife, and two sons. Later, the two sons married Moabite women. Shortly after that, the two sons died without any of them having children. The family was then left with three widows, Naomi, Orav, and Ruth. It was very tragic to Naomi, a feeling of sorrow in her heart, a desperation of her situation. Some time later, Naomi heard that there was food back in Bethlehem. Herself and Ruth traveled there at Bethlehem. The whole town was cheered because of them. And the women said, is this Naomi? Elimelech and the two sons of Naomi are no more, but here is Naomi only with a Moabite young woman. Naomi must have looked a lot different because of pain. Pain can change the way we look. Truly, people wear their pain on their faces. She said to them, do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went away full, and the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi, when the Lord has testified against me, and the Almighty has brought calamity upon me? Ruth chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. Naomi so bitter indeed. She changes her name officially. Abraham's name was changed to Abraham and Jacob to Israel. In those cases, God changed their names. Naomi changed her name from delightful or pleasant to non-pleasant or bitter one. Naomi gives complaints against God for taking from her. What are the things that make us bitter in life? When life doesn't look great, famine, hunger in the land, economic disaster, unemployment, battered education system, and so on, no matter our circumstances, we should not look back with bitterness, and selective memory like the children of Israel in the wilderness when they were tired of God's provision of manna. The bitter heart has a bad memory. We have often looked at our circumstances and say that God has judgment on our life. We do not know what God thinks. Nor are we very good at interpreting apparent blessings or curses. Something bad can come and we think God is mad, not happy with us. God disciplines every son he loves. Our pain might very well be the clearest expression of God's love for us. The one thing Naomi got right was that God is sovereign over all things. Behind the details of your life is a God who is active and who controls all things. This is very true. We are all chosen in Christ, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with his own will. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. Our Lord Jesus Christ is not morally responsible for any evil. In the story of Job, he lost everything in a moment. His wealth was all stolen. His children all died. He responded to the tragedy the Lord gave. And the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job chapter 1 verse 20. Joseph was one of Jacob's 12 sons. The favored. His brothers were jealous of him. And hated him.
for it. They sold him to slavery in his master's house. He was falsely accused. He was sent to prison. He spent years there. And from the prison, he became the second in command in Egypt. His brothers went to Egypt for food. And in the long story, Jacob and the rest of the family moved to settle down in Egypt. When Jacob died, Joseph's brothers became afraid that Joseph would revenge. But Joseph says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Genesis chapter 50, verses 19 and 20. This is the belief in the goodness of God. How then do we fight against bitterness in our lives? We are to trust in the Lord's goodness. God is good, but how can we really know He is? He is really good and no evil can accomplish His good purposes in the cross of Jesus Christ. In the cross of Jesus, God demonstrates His love his own love for us in this. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Whatever it is that evil intends against you, my God is intending it for a good that you might see and understand. But the cross of Jesus calls you to believe. God is always gracious and at work on your behalf. If only Naomi knew that God was working even in their time of arrival. This is God's grace. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we do not know what your plans are for us. However, my listeners are coming to you this season of harvest. Grant them the grace to wait and see how you work it out for their good and your glory. Amen. I will not forget.